Emily is when we get these requests, and this is kind of our conversation we'd like some input on from the advisory committee is, you know, it's, it's awkward for us to bring it to you if they don't qualify, because then if you change it, you know, we can adopt it to them, but is that the long-term vision that you want? And if they, you know, don't um, get to a point where they can purchase, we can do a long-term adoption. We've certainly done that in many, many instances. It's just, would you prefer us to bring them when they're able to, or would you prefer us to bring them prior with the understanding that it would be an adoption and not a sale? So, which is kind of something we hadn't anticipated but came up this time, and we'd like to have some direction on that so we can let folks know before we get to the meeting. You know, when I think about this, we need to be consistent. If it's, if it's a policy that we have in place, but then also, it's the policies that sometimes are the, are the challenge. Um, and so I think if we have the policy, being able to offer alternatives as they work towards um, breaking, the bar breaking those barriers down, so help from the treasurer's office um, might be an option. Do we adopt a lot un until um, those issues are resolved? Um, I think our ways to continually work with those um, residents who have that desire um, without, you know, cutting it off and saying, the policy says this and we're done, you know, be given some options to try and work towards it. And that is exactly how we usually adopt a lab program. I mean, some folks adopt and beautify on the street, but a lot of folks adopt and then get to the point where they can buy, and we take those adoption fees and apply it to that purchase price. So they're not Yeah, so they don't lose that investment. Because then you also want to be fair to those who, you know, um, are in the same situation and weren't, you know, uh, and had to wait until, you know, the taxes were paid or whatever. Um, you, you, you don't want to jump ahead and give them the opportunity to, to get it with uh, around the policy and then apply the policy elsewhere. So you do want to be fair in applying the policy and be fair in offering alternatives to help get them there. So we have had several successful adoptions to purchase. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and it's good that you know they're not you know losing any money at their actually uh, with that money being applied to the purchase, so that that's also helpful. I think a, a good aspect of it. But are there other thoughts? Um, yeah. Um, so the suggestion that was just made: could we formally adopt that into some sort of policy where we um, uphold that if there are neighbors who are in this particular situation that would like to. Um, acquired silos but don't have the means to do that and our first step would be to have them go through it at that level. If that is what we do, I agree. That's, that's our right. policy. Yep. You make that motion? <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. That's what we do. So it's the only time we, I mean, if, if they are adopting and they get into issues with junk violations or something like that, then that's a problem for us. But typically they maintain, we don't have to maintain, so it's kind of a win-win and it's 25 bucks. Okay. And we do it. It's an annual an annual adoption, so Mariah in our office sends out a letter, they just sign it, and it come back to $25, it's pretty famous. And there's a motion on the floor? So I move that <coughs> I move uh, for the reclassification of parcel 390000410 located west of Greenland Avenue at the Public Street intersection from the Village of the Slot Program to be split into a side lot with um, adopted slot until they can mm -hmm. afford the side lot. I second. And um, it's been moved and supported. But I think clarification might be needed um, because I think at first you were saying to adopt a a policy to well she said that as, as a whole. My question was about the word split. 
Mm -hmm. Do you want us to split the lot between the two neighbors? One we don't have an application from, one we do have a or one we don't have a property statement of interest from, one we do. Or do you want us to just move it into the side lot program and deal with the property statement of interest on file? I think that um, it was indicated that both neighbors had interests, although neither one was able to Correct. get it together at this point. So I think that we should go ahead and split it and try and work with both neighbors. And is that the case? Is that correct that both have a desire? We yes. do know that oh, much. Sure. Okay. All right. Um, so it's been moved by Commissioner Morris, supported by Mr. Keith. And is there any discussion or clarification on staff right here? I'm just curious if we do not receive that um, property statement of interest from the other neighbor in a timely fashion, can we set a time period for that and let them know? Or because to split that lot, we'll have to survey it multiple. We have to survey it, or is it a lot? We want to survey it, so that's not a big problem because it's a flat. It's a question. Lot. If that person never comes forward, that stalls the, the neighbor that has Come taken forward. the proper steps. Right. So, could we set a timeline or? Is there any entitlement to the whole lot? The neighbor? That, yes. Mm -hmm. And you make it happen. I mean, could, could a timeline be however long it takes them to get their? Taxes resolved to actually purchase the lot. I mean, does it have to be like 60 days, 90 days? Or could it no, just for be the other person to be able to trust. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yep. Like, could they have the same amount of time it takes for that other person to get their stuff resolved? That way, it's just being fair. You know, they got more time too, just like they have more time to get themselves together. I mean, that's what I'm asking. Could that time might be extended until that person's like, okay, I can officially buy this lot? And then if they have the same thing in that time frame, then we're, you know, this lot goes to them entirely. I um I do like the idea, but I don't want us to kind of. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I I don't want us to drag our feet on this um and hold up the other property owner. Mm -hmm. So I do feel like it would be appropriate to set a time limit limit for them to at least put in an uh, entrance because that's all that they have to do is put in an entrance. So we're not saying that you have to have your. Taxes and everything figured out in 60 days, but yeah. if we say that you have to have a statement of interest between 30 and 60 days, I think that would be fair. So I think your motion would include splitting the lot. Mm -hmm. And I guess my point of concern or clarification is if the other party, even though they verbally said it, but they don't follow through, then we've gone ahead and started to split the lot or to keep it as one lot and see, I, I don't know timing-wise what's the right or the best thing to do, but. I believe she was saying like, maybe a friendly amendment of some sort to put a timeline on them putting in a purchase um, property, statement. property statement of interest. And if 30, 60 days, whatever, she amends it to, if they do not, then the split would not happen. Okay, they would just be talking about, understand. Thank you. They would just be talking about the one neighbor that has taken the proper steps and put it in property okay. statement. Ask a question. If we were to split it and it fell through, would they both be um, qualifying lots? Yes. Because it's 100 feet wide. I think you have it in the staff report. Yeah. Okay, so they would. Yeah, so it's a okay. qualifying lot for the neighbor who no. put the No, if we were to split it and one of them fell through, yeah. then we wouldn't be left with a substandard lot. Oh, I see. From okay. a zoning perspective. Okay. So I'm just trying to think it through. Got it. Got it. Um, so, Commissioner Morris, in your um, motion, was there a um, amendment, friendly amendment that you wanted to make? to uh, add 30 or 60 days to to that or uh, or a certain time period for the neighbor who has not submitted their PSI to do so. Yes, but I would like to lean on the board to come up with a timeline. Are there thoughts on that timeline? What's reasonable? Um, and I guess I should go back to the staff there. You've been requesting this already. I think it's only been a week or so, two weeks. Okay. They, they so it's very new. Okay. Yeah, they first contacted us early last week, and then we gave them a call back. I think there's a different. Okay. So it's very new. Yeah. And it's a simple, the PSI is a very simple process. Nothing that a 
you know, I'll say in fourth grade, he couldn't read and understand. I mean, I'm just being serious. I couldn't do that thing at all like that. Okay. All right. So with that, uh, 30, 60 days, 45, meet the middle. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I said meet the middle, 45 days. Or at least uh, two months. I said 60. I think 60 is fair. 60 is fair. Right now. Okay. Um, how does the uh, original, the person who made the motion? They've already reached out, you know. The process has begun. Do you think 60 is too long? I think 60 is too long. That's just me. We're, we're a little bit of split, so I don't want to say anything. <laughs> yeah. 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 We got a couple of 60s. Yeah, 40. Well, my question is, are we talking about doing this across the board? So this comes up down the road because we're just thinking about this one person or these two, you know, individuals. What about you know the future? If somebody's situation is a little different. So I'm asking, is this like just period? Because you know I don't want us to get stuck on oh it's just these two people we just talking last week type of thing. You know this is always going to be the policy. So if we say 60, is that fair for someone in any situation that this may come up again that we just say this is just across the board 60 days? See, right. I think the motion is for this particular situation. So okay. So okay. Okay. Yeah. But right. if we want to, you know, okay. have a separate motion mm -hmm. to talk about in general, yeah, in general, right? Um, we, we certainly can do that. Um, and, and I think we also have to be mindful. We, we have a pretty lean staff, and you know, uh, as you give people opportunity, they're not going to be able to, you know, stay on somebody. Within the 60 days, we said that, or 45 days, we said that. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to be responsive, but we can't ex expect them to chase people down. Oh, no, no, I wouldn't chase them. them. They just All know right. this is the parameters, and if you don't hear me from this date, it's just right. a done deal. You know, right. I'm not asking for any more work on you, you know, just to know that we give them this much time. So yeah. it's safe, you know. Yeah, you, got, you been gave them two weeks already, you said? Uh, last week. I think it was last week. Sure. I go home, I'm going to pray. Yeah, about 45, yeah. 45. 45. So last week we gave him a notice. What was that? A, a letter? Or a, we a, called. A, we we called. talked to him on the phone. We called him again. And they answered, and you spoke with them. Yeah. They called us. They called on them. Tuesday, and we were putting our packet together. And so that was that was where like that was the one neighbor that called, not the other one that you. Well, Miss yeah. Miss yeah. Uncle's right here. Mm -hmm. She's the one neighbor on okay. 242 side, and then the other neighbor called on Tuesday and expressed interest, but hasn't submitted a PSI, a property statement of interest. And that was explained oh, yeah. on how to do that step-by-step. Step. Yep. And they didn't express the center. So. What's the age of this individual? I have no idea. Me and Bethel. Ms. Bethel has trouble hearing. Oh, he's trying to get to the phone. Oh, he's trying to get to the <laughs> not her. No, not her. Not her, her neighbor. The neighbor that also wants clear. to do the property. <laughs> Just I'm, I'm being frank, yeah. you know. Yeah. Huh. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. well, thank you. We can always stop by, but um, I mean, they did call us. Our team did reach out. We're giving 45 days. We'll send them a letter and all that good stuff. And call again. Yeah. Would yeah. most folks be comfortable with 45 days? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, friendly amendment made. You accept it as a seconder. Lovely. <laughs> Let's go ahead and um, we are voting on the motion to reclassify this property when we come to develop this lot to a side lot program split, adopting it uh, until um, they meet the requirements and giving 45 days for the property owner to submit their PSI. I hope I got that right. You did. Okay. Landmaker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we'll take a roll call vote, please. Yes. Lynn Ward Gray? Yes. Janina Ward? Yes. Ron Sweet? Yes. Dr. Alicia Johnson? Yes. Marcel Dee? Yes. Shirley McKinney? Yes. Cynthia Fleming? Yes. Jamie Brown? Yes. The motion has carried unanimously. Thank you for that robust discussion. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, then any other with that particular one? All right, then I'll go to six. Yes. Is this going to be a standard procedure? That was um, just for this one. Right. Right. But if somebody wants to form, formulate some type of motion or an overall consideration, you can always do that. We are moving on to uh, 6B, which is to discuss and decide the change of disposition for a Greenwood Avenue property from the Dolphins lot to a side lot program sale. Oh, I'm sorry. That's what's on the agenda. Can we do it then backwards? Yeah, that's what I was with you. That yeah. is, we did do a backwards. We did. So what Janaya was reading, I was like, wait a minute, I thought this was the same. You sure did. That sounds like, did I say it wrong? Right. So we need to correct the record. We were actually voting. We, I said it right. I read it right. You read it right. You read it right, but we just jumped in. Okay, I was so confused. Yeah, okay. Oh, but it's classified as six A on here. Yeah. On the 6B. on the supporting document, but on the agenda, it's actually a six B. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. So, so six A just became six B. <laughs> but we really meant for. Oh yeah, that's it. We really meant to apply that. Well, yeah, because six. Yeah, I got. It. I promise. I, I, I hope I got it. That's the best. <laughs> okay. Now we're doing six A. We're doing six B. It, but it in the packet. But not six B. Right. Um, <laughs> we started that way. Yeah. So this is we're doing another one. So we're doing another one. There you go. Yeah, we're doing another one. Okay. So let me go back and read that one because we already did 6B on our agenda, on the agenda part. So now 6A is deciding on a, a disposition for the Roosevelt Avenue property from Douglas Lot to a side lot program sale. I'm going to start with the staff and then I'll invite um, the residents who are here to speak on this agenda item uh, to come forward. Staff. Yeah, so it is a motion to um, reclassify the lot on the south side of, of course, you can be located on the south side of Roosevelt between Harvard Street and Wood Street. We have a map on the back. So the original disposition by the AC was a combined in DTL. So the lot directly to the left on the map um, that is not colored would be the, the lot that was voted to combine with the one in orange. Um, I left it blank just so that we could see the lot that they were interested in um, having a side lot. Um, the adjacent lot is um, 105, excuse me, so both parcels together would be 180 um, feet for in frontage and 132 feet deep. Um, the parcel that the applicant or the interested party is interested in is 75 feet by 132 in depth. So. Yes, and then um, they were interested in cleaning up the debris, the debris excuse me, and um, making driveway improvements and improvements to the green space. Thank you. And him, Mr. and Mr. Kim? Hi, I'm Bob. Hi, I'm Bob. Thank you so much. <laughs> if you can now please come on up. We have your handout um, and your, uh, your name and your address. For the record, this is being recorded. And then go into the seat. Perfect. Uh, dear advisory committee, I am Dustin Heimbaugh. This is my wife. Lila Heimbaugh. We are located at 197 Roosevelt Avenue West. Uh, I'm a science teacher from Climax Scott Junior Senior High School, and my wife joins me tonight. Yeah, and I work for Battle Creek Public School as a bilingual tutor and at Battle Creek Central and Springfield Middle School. So we are here today to request an appeal on your decision to develop the side lot next to our home and allow us to purchase it through the side lot program. When I originally purchased this home in 2019, I was a single man. I wasn't sure how long I'd be staying in the area. This home was very appealing to me due to the open land on both sides and the possibility to expand through the side lot program. I've always desired this lot, but didn't have the time or money until now to purchase it. I was unaware that the lot could be removed from this program or else I would have acted a little bit quicker. 
Since I moved here and now with help from my wife, we've been lightly maintaining those lots and the roads and areas around them. We clean up the garbage on a weekly basis. We've been removing old debris and leftover construction materials and recycling what we can. Uh, if we can purchase this lot, we plan to continue cleaning up, mowing, and maintaining it, as well as some light landscaping um, while being environmentally conscious. We will also be looking at expanding our driveway, starting a garden, and possibly building a detached carport um, or possibly a stand woodshed garage. Now that we are married and are starting a family, we need more space to expand. We are ready to take care of all the duties necessary to own and pay for this lot. We are also interested in the possibility of the lot next to it.